Hello Seawolves, how are you doing? So uh, today we have an amazing interview uh, for you guys with uh, the none other than uh, Pip Hare of the uh, former Bureau Valley de which is now going to become uh, Medallia. So uh, we're going to talk of course uh, about her new uh, entry uh, in, in four years, I guess, into the next Van de Globe. And um, this will kind of be the first interview in, uh, in a series, you know, leading up, I guess, four years uh, to the Van de Globe, because, uh, you know, generally the interest in the Van de Globe always goes, you know, you know down uh, a little bit over the years and then kind of returns maybe like a year before the race that everybody kind of really gets uh, back into it. And, uh, yeah, I think it will be really cool. Uh, I already set up some amazingly uh, uh, cool projects where we're going to get really close to the build of some of the new uh, uh, Imakas that'll be uh, you know going in that new Vendeglobe race, and also uh, joining some teams uh, like, for example, uh, Pip Hare, who are in uh, kind of you know this generation uh, Imakas and are going to be updating them and adjusting them towards. Uh, you know, new foils and uh, and things like that. Also for the next race, so we'll kind of keep a close eye on all the goings on in preparation for the next race. And I think it's also will be interesting to kind of dive into the uh, to the training and all the different things that go into preparing for a race like that. Fortunately, uh, Amsterdam is not that far from uh, from Lorient, so uh, I'm uh, I'm definitely going to be uh, in Lorient also uh, fairly regularly at uh, at various times to uh, to film and uh, and actually take a close up look at some of the things and the training that goes into uh, uh, preparing for the Van Globe. So I'm personally really looking forward to seeing all this amazing uh, sailing up close. And uh, yeah, today we're going to start with the interview uh, with Pip. And a few things that are good to mention. So uh, we have at the, uh, end of, uh, the, the end of August, beginning of September, we have the, uh, the workshops, the sailing clinics, both offshore and coastal clinics on uh, the uh, Volvo 65 Childhood. There are still a few places available there. So I'll check the link below in the description. If you want to uh, join me, the Corona rules and everything are super okay now in Holland. Traveling is okay again for the most part. So. Uh, uh, a lot less risk that these uh, will be cancelled like they were uh, uh, initially. So uh, if you want to join us, that's going to be some amazing uh, days there. Hope to uh, you know meet some of you there. And also good to mention because I kind of forgot that in all of the well all of the adventure of the channel Sea Wolves as it stands now, that originally I started this YouTube channel uh, just because of my own you know little team here in Amsterdam, which is you know literally called Sea Wolves. Uh, where uh, in the summer period every Saturday I go sail with people who want to learn how to sail and uh, you know we kind of form a, a loose team let's say and uh, yeah so it's kind of like a sailing sports team and uh, it's pretty much a whatsapp group so you kind of become a member and then whenever I go sailing I just let people know when you can you know hop on uh, on the days that you want and pretty much every Saturday we were always uh, uh, sailing and you have the chance to uh, you know sail sail with me on the boat here on uh, on the spirit of uh, Amsterdam as you know Ginfis 38 uh, and and basically practice the things and learn the things that the focus on the details that you want to be learning on whether it's you know steering or raising sails or um, you know doing some faux solo to train yourself up to become a solo sailor uh, one day or you know if you're a total noob not pretty much the whole uh, a spectrum whatever you want to practice that weekend you actually have a chance to uh, practice it so last weekend for example we went out we just went uh, close to that island pampas you know went on anchor went swimming a bit and had a really nice sunny day lots of wind and just uh, you know hours and hours tacking jibing practicing super cool uh time so if you want to join the sea wolves and, and it's basically a, you know pretty low uh, monthly fee uh to join you can join any month you want or, or cancel at any time and uh, you know it's just a, a fun team i have maximum 20 places because of course not everybody can make it all the time and i'm able to sail with 10 people maximum on the boat so i found last year that if we have 20 members and you know with, with some people being able to make it and others not we pretty much always have a nice full boat uh, every day that we want to go sailing so uh, if you want to know more about that if you want to join my team here check also the link in the description uh, below and you know would love to uh, meet you guys and see you on board here and have some fun sailing all together so uh, that's it for the uh, announcements now without further ado let's get into this amazing interview with uh, Pip Hare enjoy so good morning wolves and uh, welcome and we're uh, we're back on again with uh, the one and the only Pip Hare welcome uh, to the show again Pip 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Good to be here. <laughs> Super nice to uh, have you back on board. Of course, uh, let's start with a little toast here. You have uh, the English tea there again. Yeah. I do. Ah, there we go. There we go. Well, three, <laughs> two, one. Cheers over there. Mm. It's a bit hot. Oh yeah, uh, mine is the perfect. Uh, it's this is this is actually I have to admit this is the senseo. Uh, I cheated here actually, <laughs> but uh, but it's still the, but it's still delicious. Coffee is coffee, right? Um, but uh, yeah, of course you're uh, you're freshly back from uh, the ocean race. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know nicely, uh, Cooper. And we have lots to talk about. Of course, uh, the the big adventure with your own new foiling in Mocha now, so uh, no worries, Wolves, we're definitely going to <laughs> dive into that and ask a lot of questions, super happy for you, like uh, really, really super cool, uh, but let's talk first a little bit about the adventure behind you, because, uh, well, the ocean race, uh, very, very interesting, uh, of course, I was myself in the in the prequel on board of um, um, uh, Childhood, so I got to actually taste it a little bit myself uh, also, of course, you on uh, the new Bureau Valet, formerly uh, L'Occitane, Mm -hmm. um, and I think interesting end result with uh, with offshore team Germany uh, taking yeah. the prize there. I don't think anybody saw that coming. <laughs> so I just I kind of wanted to start with asking you, what's your take on that win? By by how do you uh, you know having of course also raised them uh, yourself because you know everybody's talking about that of course. How do you view this particular uh, you know well, well deserved uh, victory? Um. I mean, I think it is, what I love about it is that, you know, this class is yet again demonstrating that it's not just about, you know, uh, whoever has the, the, the biggest campaign, the newest boats. You know, there's, there's a lot more to the class than just about the boats. Um, and, you know, obviously the conditions in the med were far from ideal <laughs> for those of us with big foils. Um, and, you know, the, the offshore team Germany sailed a brilliant course. You know, they took the most direct route. They played to their strengths and, you know, they deserved the win. And, um, and I just think it it brings so much life and positivity to the class it's a really good thing yeah 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 what do you uh, what do you think of the like has it changed your personal view on the you know the the everlasting foiling versus non foiling uh, discussion especially in the light that you are now have joined the foiling club <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so no it hasn't because you know i'm i'm very specific about what i want to do with my boat my goal mm -hmm is the Vendée Globe race mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I still very much believe that you know the the although we saw some outstanding performances without foils in the Vendée Globe you know the next step for me is with foils because I believe there is a significant performance advantage for the Vendée Globe However, you know, if we were only going to be doing light airs racing in the Mediterranean then I wouldn't want foils so it's you know, it, it, it depends what you want out of your boat, um, but I'm I'm pretty happy with what I've got. Nice, 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 nice. Then uh, a little bridge to uh, well, we'll get to your boat in a in a second. Uh, but of course, being on board the new uh, Bureau Valet, which is interesting, of course, because Lewis, uh, you know, like I, I think most people know by now that you have taken over uh, the helm of his former, uh, uh, you know, a uh, Vende winner uh, now Bureau Valet uh, Deu. So it's extra interesting to kind of be actually on on the on the new boat. For him, which is of course one of the latest generations, uh, uh, the former Loxi uh, uh, Ten. Uh, so, so how was that? Uh, th that must have been quite interesting for you to actually kind of make that switch to one foiler and then immediately step on board of another one that is maybe again a, a, a leap forward, at least in like the design and all this type of uh, aspect. So, how was that? Yeah, so, well, I mean, this is my first falling experience because my boat is in bits at the moment. Um, so, you know, I haven't even sailed my boat yet. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, so, you know, to go straight on to uh, Bureau Valley um, and sail with those guys was kind of a baptism of fire, really. And, <laughs> and I must admit, you know, it was all because they launched the boat quite late. You know, they only turned up one hour before the start. 
<laughs> they were all, you know, it was all kind of everyone was running to catch up, really. Mm. Um, and then I, I only joined them. Um, I arrived at the boat sort of one hour before we docked out for the for the coastal race in uh -huh. Cache, and yeah. and so kind of just getting on and looking at it all, and then within 20 minutes of hoisting the sails, we were fully launched. And, and I'm kind of just almost, you know, those um, those uh, stop motion videos where someone's just standing in like a really busy station and it's all going past it. It's all felt like that really, like, uh -huh. and, and I'm, I was just standing there going, well, what the heck have I done? Oh my goodness. It, but it, <laughs> you know, quite quickly, you know, it actually started to feel like home. It is, an incredible boat absolutely yeah. incredible my biggest fear though was that you know i'd get off that boat and then get onto my boat again <laughs> <laughs> but i won't i'm gonna love my boat i know i am yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no definitely definitely I, I had actually a similar experience with actually this because uh, my boat came out of the water literally the day after i came back from the from the uh from the the prologue so uh, I had, you know, rebuilt my own boat, updated everything. And then I first sailed for a week on childhood. And then I came home to put my own boat back in the water and sail on. And I had the same kind of like, now I'm, now I'm back to this kind of experience. <laughs> but uh, but uh, very nice. And uh, um, how did you, uh, how did it feel as far as the performance uh, uh, difference to you? Because a different boat than your own uh, boat, of course. But like you said, your first time really full on race foiling. Yeah. Um, how, how, how was the experience of the performance difference uh, uh, for you there? Was it quite shocking or uh, how did you experience that? Um, so, I mean, on, on some levels, it's extraordinary. On other levels, it's comfortingly similar. Uh -huh. um, so I think the extraordinary part of it is, you know, those reaching conditions and, and the, first, the first leg of that mm. final um leg from Alicante you know when, yeah. when we went out to this um mark of little island perfectly flat water 20 knots of breeze reaching conditions and I mean the the speed is unbelievable and you know compared then to offshore team Germany we went past them like they were standing still you know mm -hmm. you've got 30 knots is just so achievable and it feels completely normal. Um, and actually it was on, on Bureau Valley 3, it was you know, really quite a soft ride. I was, I was surprised how little effort it was to get up to that speed. And then other than this massive volume of water coming over the deck, mm -hmm. how comfortable and right it felt. And there wasn't, there wasn't big deceleration either. Um, but we didn't, you know, we didn't have a massive sea state. Um, yeah, but you know, that is that is the clear. You know, immediately if you, if you put in that scenario and someone says to you foils or no foils, it's you know there is no question there. It's it's uh -huh. foils all the way. Um, and then you know, obviously we had. Um, I, I suppose the other thing that actually was was really interesting to me was we had again it was. Uh, in flatter seas, but we had some extraordinary upwind conditions. Mm. Um, we had a patch where we were doing 16 knots upwind at a 60 degree true wind angle. I mean, that, <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so, you know, that, that's, you, you, you're immediately looking at all of these advantages going, Wow, this is incredible! And for the whole time, I was taking notes and taking photos and settings and just trying to learn as much as I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. And then you know, the other stuff, um, the the sort of um, the the downwind VMG, the stuff in the lighter airs, the transitionary stuff. I mean, that was all quite familiar. You know, you have to work quite hard. Um, you've got to constantly be thinking about the balance that you want to achieve. Um, mm -hmm. And so that actually seemed quite familiar and there were aspects as well because Super Bigu was such a an ergonomically difficult boat to sail mm -hmm. um, there were bits of it that were just so much easier um, and, and actually you know it was it was uh, I've always rated Sam Manoir as a designer anyway I love his past 40s because I think they're designed 
with a sailor at the center of them. Mm. And, and I definitely appreciated his touch on, mm. on Bureau Valley because things were just in the right place and they were easy to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, uh, did you ever have the feeling of, uh, of course, comparing your, your previous experience on, uh, on Super Bigu uh, Medallia and this race, like, uh, well, you know, this, this new boat is a little bit for pussies because I just, uh, you know, was outside <laughs> in the rain and uh, my God. You know, <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, every so every time I'm standing under that amazing coach roof in the cockpit and there's these volumes of water coming over and I'm kind of just chuckling to myself. Going, oh my God, I, <laughs> I was in the middle of that during the whole race all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. yeah and, the, and the guys did say to me, you know, they they sort of into day one of, of the second leg. Um, you know, one of the guys turned around to me and said, oh, you know, how does this compare to your old boat? And I said, it's easier. And then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I wonder, did uh, did Lewis say anything to you uh, concerning uh, Bureau Valley Deux? Uh, like you having the experience, of course, on Bureau 3, like don't get too comfortable because it's not going to be that easy or, uh, or something of that uh, nature? So we talked all the time. And actually, that was what was just incredible about the experience for me is... You know, it's it's um, they they want to support us, our team, as much in the handover as possible. But obviously, they're running up their own campaign now. We're all just working so hard to our own objectives. Yeah. So to be able to go and race with Louis for mm -hmm. that amount of time, yeah. and also with other members of his team who have sailed on the old Bureau Valley, was was great because you know I've got I've got all the time live references and examples to ask him so I kept saying you know do I was looking at all the settings when do we rate the foils when the foils in and out and I'm always saying how do we do this on Bureau Valley 2 you know Medallia we've got to call it Medallia now yeah, um, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. so I was always asking about that and he said that it, the ride is more aggressive it's going to be more aggressive on Medallia the landings are more aggressive but also we've got We've only got small foils, um, and obviously the foils on Bureau Valley are bigger. Um, so I think I think it's not going to be as smooth, but we've got a three and a half year program of development with our boats, and and we'll kind of see where that goes, really. Yeah, yeah, you got lot, you got lots of time now. That's that's nice that you're really super early uh, uh, starting now. So it'll be really interesting to see how much more you can press uh, uh, out of uh, the ship. And I think that's also one of the things that uh, I think everybody talked about. Uh, you know, also uh, about Loxy Ten in the race. That one of the particular things that was kind of known about that boat is that it had a bit of smoother uh, mm -hmm. ride than the rest of the Mocha. Do you think that's due to the more to the hull shape or or the the, the kind of the different foil uh, shape? Um, any, uh, any idea on that? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know. I think it's probably a, a combination of both, but you, you would have thought that the, the fuller volume in the bow might make a bit more of a difference, but I, I don't know, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, interesting to, uh, to get your insights on it uh, anyway. But, uh, well, let's make the transition to, uh, to the future and your, uh, your very own uh, uh, foiler now. So let's, let's call it Medallia from now, because uh, that is the new name, uh, I guess. But for, for all you guys who didn't know, so it's the... Uh, the winner of the previous race, the uh, the Bureau of Valedeu, uh, formerly uh, Lewis Burton's uh, boat, of course. And um, uh, yeah, w w so as you say, it's in pieces right now, but you're you're yeah. picking it up next week in France. Yeah. And uh, well, w what is the plan? Because obviously, uh, the heart of the campaign is going to be the next uh, Vendée Globe, so we can all look forward to uh, yeah. seeing you in action again uh, uh, there. But what's the immediate future uh, look like, and what do you, what do you plan on? Uh, you know, tell tell us about your plans. What are you going to do? Um, so we are just um, rebranding it now, um, mm -hmm. and it will go in the water mid July. And I am in the wonderful position of recruiting my team, mm -hmm. um, which is great. You know, to have people working with me is <laughs> <It's awesome. laughs> yeah, um, and. Um, we will be bringing it back to the UK um, at the very end of July mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then have kind of decided, along with Medallia, we've decided that this year we're not actually going to race because it's, um, you know, we, we, we're creating our team. It's a big step up for me and um, 
we're kind of short on we're we're already short on time to run through to the TJV, mm-hmm. and and 2022 is a huge solo year. So in 2022, we've got the Bermuda 1000 in May, which is solo from Dwan and around the Azores and back. Um, and then there's the Vendée Arctique, which um, they're talking about extending the length of that course to make it a possible qualifier for the Vendée Globe race. Oh, okay, nice. nice. And then at the end of the year, it is the route to run. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, my focus really is to 2022 because, you know, that's, that's going to be a massive year for me as a solo sailor. And we've decided as a team that we would be better off really focusing on training hard this year without, you know, every time you kind of bring a race in, then you're bringing in all of these other objectives and deadlines. Um, And so um, uh, for, for us to train and maybe go south over the winter and spend winter training down somewhere a bit warmer would would actually put us in better stead for 2022 but also we have you know we want to to work on a development program with the boat inevitably there will be a foil change at some point and for us to be able to do that we really get need to get to know the boat intimately um so it's about as much time on the water as possible and and kind of making it work for us Nice, nice. Well, oh, really, really exciting. So, uh, no, no plans to join the uh, the uh, the ocean race uh, uh, then uh, with your new boat, near market class, fully crewed. Um, so, I think you know we would be interested in the next ocean race, but not this one because you know the the we have the the boat is has been bought to do the Vendée. Mm. That's the objective, and to rally it around the world in between now and the Vendée would reduce my time on the boat but also you know adds wear and tear to it mm-hmm. um so we're very very focused on Vendée first yeah. but then potentially ocean race might be interesting afterwards nice 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 and are there any uh, specific uh, you know innovative uh, things let's say with the with the different systems uh, on board we, 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 we have quite a long, uh, well, I mean, you know, what's a long development uh, time for a Van Globe? Of course, everything's kind of short. Uh, but are there any specific um, technical challenges that you, uh, you know, also coming from your previous experience on Medallia, want to, uh, you know, try for yourself or integrate? I mean, it is a development class after all. So are there any yeah. development level uh, uh, systems that you can talk about that would be interesting uh, for us to know that you plan on uh, exploring on your foiler now? Um, at the moment, we sort of don't know what we don't know. I think we mm. really need to, to just kind of get a feel for it. But what we're very keen on doing, and I've always been keen on doing, is actually just, just adapting the boat for me. You know, there needs to be a recognition that, that every sailor is different and we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. And actually to create, you know, the boat we're taking, effectively, we're taking louis boat and we want to turn it into my boat and and initially there'll be a phase where we don't touch anything because it's like that for a reason and this boat has an incredibly incredible pedigree it won in 2016 it was third in 2020 you know this is a good boat so you don't go fiddling with stuff until you understand why it is that way yeah and 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 then we'll take the development from there but, you know, as I said already, we're definitely planning for a, a foil upgrade, um, probably in 2023 mm-hmm. and, um, and, you know, sale plan and, and all of those sorts of things. But, but very much playing to my strengths and helping with my weaknesses where we can. Right. And are you, are you planning on uh, being based in France also with your team or, uh, or in England? What, what's your, uh, you have any ideas on that already or uh, still uh... we're going to be in Paul um so my, okay. my home port of Paul we are we're supported by Paul Harbour commissioners they they love the fact the team is here mm-hmm. and we're really trying to create a community feel around the team and kind of again you know all the way through my last campaign I was trying to be as open as possible so open day so people come and look at the boats you know just Sometimes I think our, our sport really suffers with this um, kind of 
far away you can't touch us kind of thing you know at mm. the top end it's like oh that's a really swanky boat but you're not allowed anywhere near it yeah, 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 and, yeah. and so <clears throat> i i really wanted to, to to you know break that to to a certain extent and and make people feel that this is a sport for them and this is a sport they can relate to and it's a sport they can support mm. um so so we're quite proud to be a pool again but having said that you know, I, of course, will want to go to France um, and train with the guys in France. I'd be crazy not to. Yeah. Um, so so home is cool, but we're going to be fairly transient, I would have said. Nice, 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 nice. So uh, I guess then, uh, like we did with the childhood team, we should, uh, once your boat is all up and running, uh, organize some workshops for the sea wolves uh, near pool to uh, come and uh, explore the Amok a little bit with you, uh, Pip. That Absolutely, would be a nice yeah. idea. Yeah, we've got all uh, sorts of stuff like that, yeah. Yes, yeah. come that day, we'll definitely uh, arrange that. That should be uh, really <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, and, and our... Dredge Holland a bit, we could come and see you. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But the, the problem here is that there's literally not a, there's only one marina here in the entire country that yeah. can uh, house the Amaka. And it's, uh, and even then, it's pretty, uh, pretty, there's literally only one docking spot yeah. uh, where it doesn't touch bottom. So it's pretty hard uh, here to do anything, unfortunately. Yeah. But, um, uh, no, I lost my train of thought there. Um, are, are there any other uh, sort of more more team related or you know environmental goals or things like that that you also want to incorporate in your uh, in your new campaign uh, this time around? Um, yes. Yeah. So um, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things. We are the Amoka Sustainability Charter is has the the um, the team at Class Amoka have been working on that for nearly a year now. And it's a pretty impressive document. Mm -hmm. um, and basically the idea is that they've set out a whole heap of goals that each of the Amoka teams could align to. And then we kind of go through the document and, and we work out where our sustainability goals want or need to be. And then they we work together as a class to try and achieve these goals. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've been, obviously sustainability is a hot topic for absolutely everybody at the moment. And I've been looking through, you know, a huge amount of diverse um, policies and materials from elsewhere. And and I think the thing that really impresses me about the Amoka one is it's proper hard hitting targets. Mm -hmm. So as a team, we are going to be working on that. Um, you know, just small, there are small things like, um, eradicating, completely eradicating the use of single use plastics mm. on the boat and in the office um, by the next one day. And actually that kind of sounds like, oh, well, that's not so hard, but it it is, you know, one of the areas that I, I'm keen to work on with British manufacturers is freeze dried food mm -hmm. because it all comes in in non-recyclable packaging yeah yeah um, but it is delicious i i'd never had it before this experience yeah and i have to say yeah i was quite i was quite impressed with how delicious yeah. they are actually yeah, yeah. Right. but there's already there's already a, a dorset based firm where i live who are looking into compostable packaging for recyclable mm -hmm. food so so we're going to kind of have little projects like that on the go but then yeah. you know on a more wider um level looking at using um so there, there there's kind of the idea that you would have one cell on board that was made from a green material so mm -hmm. like a recyclable material or something like that yeah, yeah. um and and we're, we're going to be working towards that as a team and then feeding into a mocker in general, which is, um, you know, exciting and, and, and going to be tough for us. Uh -huh. um, and then we also want to support British um, offshore racing as well. Um, uh -huh. so it's the Round Britain and Ireland race next year from Walk, um, uh -huh. and we'll do that as a team. And... Um, and I think, you know, any opportunity we have to, to join in with walk racing in the UK, whether we have competitors or not, we'll just get out there and do it because it's all practice and it's all fun and it's supporting an incredible racing scene that we have on our doorstep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I guess anyway, that it's kind of cool that you are, uh, you know, like the, the, the second 
huge Brit in the Vendee. Uh, now, after Alex, of course, was always kind of the, uh, you know, a hey, Brit is going to win this race. And now we have two contestants uh, in the, in the race, which is kind of cool. Quite there. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, you never know, right? I mean, uh, Jean came pretty close uh, this last time in a boat similar to that. So who knows? I mean, yeah. uh, it's, yeah, definitely, well. it's definitely not impossible. But uh, uh, will, will you go into the Vendee with the goal secretly to really win it? Because last time you really very openly said, look, I'm not going to win it. I'm in there, you know, to, to be the best race and to tell the most beautiful story, which I thought was super cool. And you, you absolutely did that in my mind. Mm. Is your goal closer to a I mean, high position this time? Yes, I mean, my goal, so I, I have, my goal this time is more performance orientated for sure. Okay. Um, you know, I think, I think you, in any race at any given time, uh, you are always wanting to get the highest position that could be possible for you. And, right. and that's where I am. Whether that is what that looks like, I couldn't tell you right now. My boat is in bits in San Marlo and I've never sailed it. Uh, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and I just don't, you know, I, 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 I'm not somebody that, that kind of will sit there and go, yeah, I'm going to win because it just is a very uncomfortable thing for me to say, but you can guarantee that I'm not going to stroll around. Oh, no, no. I mean, I'm already looking for, like last time, of course, because of the limitations of your boat, you know, there were moments where you had to admit like, look, I want to, but I just can't because the boat can't go any faster. But this time there won't yeah. be so many reasons. So I can't wait to see the fire uh, in you them and going, damn, this boat can get the speed. I can get there. And I'm going to get it out. And I'm really looking forward to yeah. actually seeing that. So that should be pretty nice. That was one of the nice things actually about going and, and sailing with Louis for the last um, few, you know, uh, couple of weeks, because initially, you know, you, I think you need to, you do need to be able to visualize, visualize yourself a bit in in that situation and and the first you know the first time that boat took off and there was water everywhere and and it was just so different and i i did kind of stand there and go have i gone too far you know is this can i can i imagine myself in the southern ocean doing this mm -hmm. um but then actually after after you know we we did the leg down from Cascade to Cabo St. Vincent and it was it was sort of 25 to 28 knots of breeze we had the A2 up the boat was massively over over pushed probably you know it was all straining a bit and actually after a couple of hours of that I kind of was like yeah okay I can see myself doing this I can still I can still feel it inside me I can still you know I, I, I think I can assess the risk here and I can I, I can feel that I would want to push this bow. And, and so that was quite comforting because it was like, no, I haven't gone mad. This is the right way. This is, what, <laughs> this is the right thing for me, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And, and that brings me to uh, maybe my last, but a little bit of cheeky question, because uh, actually in the last interview, uh, I asked you about the, uh, the Europe race and you said, no, I, I don't really necessarily want to because I, uh, you know, I really like the solo uh, uh, thing. So uh, how did it actually happen that you actually did uh, uh, choose to participate, Pip? <laughs> well, Louis invited me and I would have been crazy to say no. Um, you know, it was obviously, you know, it was a it was a, a kind of an extension of the fact that I bought his boat, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and very much you know, they have said they want to support us as a team and, mm -hmm. and they want the two teams to have a relationship going forwards. And so, you know, he only invited me to do leg two, but I didn't even think about it. I just said yes, because why would you... In You know, one of the things that I think we suffer from is, you know, as, as Imoka skippers, is we don't ever really get to sail with other Imoka skippers unless we're double-handed. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't get to learn from, from your peers. And yeah. so what an opportunity to sail that boat to sail with him. No question. Yeah. yeah. yeah However, and that actually, and that yeah. actually brings me to another uh, one yeah. because that's uh, actually kind of forgot that in the beginning. Uh, the, the team aspect on board of the Amakas, I think, did create a very interesting uh, different dynamic as far as how far you can push 
the boat. So obviously we're talking about a very short term race. It's just legs of a few days. So it's not nowhere near, uh, you know, the physical comparison to the Vendée Globe is just completely not there. Uh, but what was your what what's your take on that? Like, did you guys, uh, you know, really find some things out about the boat in that sense? What you can do with the team, which if you were on your own, you just never really go into that area of pushing it that hard for that long. Let's say. Um, so I think obviously the the things around how long you know, how long you keep the sails up for and stuff like that. So for example, we were using the A2 down from Cascais to Cabo St. Vincent's mm. and, um, you know, it was, we immediately put it up and, and I said to Louis, what's, what's your limit on this? And we were kind of at the limit and we stayed at the limit or over the limit. But, you know, you have a huge amount of confidence when there's five people on board and an autopilot, then, you know, if five people have to wrestle the sail down to the ground, then they will. But if you're on your own, then you would never take that risk because, you know, there's a, there's a point at which you physically just can't get the thing out of the sky. So I think, you know, your limits change because you have more hands and, and you can use different techniques and actually you can you can use brute strength to do things mm -hmm. and I, I think the other thing is that you know there's a consistency of performance that you don't get when you're solo because you know we were we were sailing in watches and um uh you know you would have you would be spending the whole watch trimming the main you know just watching the angle of heel watching the speed, watching the wind strength, and just constantly on the coffee grinder, trimming the main to maintain, you know, just on that, that level of performance. But you could never do that on your own. There are too many other things that you need to do, including mm -hmm. sleeping. Um, so, you know, there's, there is this consistency of performance that is higher. Um, but then there are, there are some aspects where, you know, it, it, it's, didn't make that much difference um, uh, because you know the autopilot is steering anyway. When you've got the huge amount of volume of water over the deck, and the autopilot's helming, then actually you kind of end up with a scenario where everyone is everyone's up, and you've got five people all crammed into this little space. Uh, and I found that quite difficult to deal with because it's mm -hmm. kind of just too too many people. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, of course, it does, it does produce a, a, a different level of performance because, because of the number of people. But I think that the learnings from that can easily feed down to the solo sailor because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're solo training, you're not finding those new limits because you're always stopping yourself at a point beyond which you think the risk isn't worth it. But if you can go out with a team of people and you can, you know, investigate new things and push the boat in new ways, mm -hmm. then that can feed down to the solo sailor and the solo sailor will improve as a result. Do you think that maybe uh, the, the class in itself needs or, or could benefit greatly from having a, uh, of course, the ocean race is, a, you know, a, a very big commitment because it's, you know, around the world. So it's a very long uh, multi-handed race. But, uh, you know, something like the Arctic, for example, but in a multi-handed uh, 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 version. Do you think that the class could benefit from something like that? To have like a structural, not as long as all around the world, but a significant race that is actually not double-handed, but multi-handed. That's also like, a, you know, more of a part of the regular circuit to drive that kind of, uh, like you say, pushing the boundaries a bit more. Do you think that it would be an interesting... Uh, yeah, I mean, and I think it is, and and you know, potentially we've got that next year with the Round Britain and Ireland race because mm -hmm. it's it's not it's not officially on the Amoka calendar, um, so it's not double handed like the Fastnet is, but yeah. you know, it, it 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 is a race with a start and a finish line. It's a really punchy course. It's a uh, course where those boats can you know really go for it, mm -hmm. um, and. And so, yeah, I mean, I think we don't necessarily need to create another race, but maybe look at what's out there and, and how we can support racing, European racing in general, by 
you know, bringing our class to somebody else's race might be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was mostly focusing on the multi-handed, like to, to sometimes have more upper hand, uh, you know, opportunities to do that in a multi-handed way. But on a on a track like you say, more that is a bit more suited to the mockas in the way that the the mat is, of course, you know, it's it's a nice course, but it's not really the ideal uh, environment, let's say, for uh, the mockas that benefit yeah. more from longer downwind stretches and bigger. Uh, yeah. bigger um okay uh, is there anything else about uh, uh medallia that you really want to uh, uh share with us because otherwise i think i'm uh, all through uh, my questions uh for now um no I, I i don't think so i mean we're just we're literally just beginning we're on on the first step of our journey so it's uh -huh. all it's all to learn at the moment, but you know, it's really exciting. I've got Joff Brown working with me again as my technical director. Which nice, is fantastic. nice. Practicing um, those rather, uh, pra practicing those rudder switches uh, again on the new boat. <laughs> well, it should be a lot easier this time because we've got flip up rudders this time. Oh, okay, right? okay. Well, nice. Yeah, it'll be something else. <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. Okay, people, well, thank you again for a very uh, nice, very insightful uh, interview. And uh, yeah, let, let's stay up to date if there are any updates. Uh, I'll be looking forward to see the new branding also. When is the, when is the new rep uh, uh, coming on when your boat goes back in the water? Um, so we should be wrapping next week. We're painting the deck at the moment. So everything is off. Every single thing is okay. off. Uh, nice, painting nice. the deck and we're gonna we're gonna um do you know time lapses of of it changing and that sort of thing so it'll all be all be there to see on on our social media channels but we should kind of um we'll be masked in mid-july so yeah the final look will be be then nice well looking forward to some amazing drone shots and uh, who knows i might hop over to france to uh, see it in person if i get the chance for now thank you very much and uh, till next time cheers thank you all right